ebiz.com private limited a vision to reality hey guys how are you doing so far we learned about the basics of computers and operating systems the aim of this session is to teach you how to get the most of the microsoft word for everyday tasks in particular it shows you the best way to write something like an essay Microsoft Word is a very popular word processor. It supports all the features of any word processors. Some features of MS Word are using Word you can create the document and edit them later as and when required by adding more text, modifying an existing text, deleting moving some part of it. Changing the size of the margins can reformat complete document or part of the text. font size and type of fonts can also be changed page numbers and header and footer can be included spelling can be checked and correction can be made automatically in the entire document word count and other statistics can be generated text can be formatted in columnar style as we see in the newspaper text boxes can also be made tables can be made and included in the text Word also allows the user to mix the graphical pictures with the text. Graphical pictures can either be created in Word itself or can be imported from outside like from Clip Art Gallery. Word also provides the mail merge facility. Word also has the facility of macros. Macros can be either attached to some function, special keys or to a toolbar or to a menu. It also provides online help of any option. So there are many countless features which are supported by MS Word. For starting Microsoft Word, click on start button. Again the same thing. Every time we come to the start button, so it is the most accessible as you can see. For starting Microsoft Word, click on start button on the task bar, bottom of your screen. Choose programs then Microsoft Word. Now you can see how Word looks like. Firstly, I will explain to you all the main parts of MS Word screen. Main screen. Now, see how we write the document. Just type whatever you want to type in the document area. Make sure to give the space between the words. That is a must. These red underlines shows wherever you have made a spelling mistake. Continue typing across the screen when there is no further space to write on this line. The words will automatically go into a new line. when you reach the extreme right hand side red or occasionally green line may appear beneath your text don't worry about this word is telling you that what you typed is not recognized not in the dictionary or that grammar may be incorrect so there might be a grammatical fault at the same time continue typing until you have at least 3 lines of words then press enter the upside down l shaped key on the right of the main keyboard you can see there to mark the end of the paragraph well friends remember do not press the enter key at the end of each line press enter only when you want to start a new paragraph never press the space bar or enter key more than twice in succession in particular do not use spaces to center a heading or line up words in columns or to add extra blank lines to force a heading onto a new page there are special key and commands for this To separate the paragraph, press enter. If you want to add one more line, press enter again. See, that's how it works. How simple, isn't it? Don't worry. If you go wrong, friends, it is very easy to correct your work. The backspace key immediately above enter in the main section of the keyboard can be used to delete the left characters. Here, you are only practicing on text. You do not need to save. but you may accidentally delete words that you needed well do not panic if you ever make mistake like that while using word then you can undo your error by using the undo button this is the undo button the undo button can be used more than once to undo a series of action one at a time click the undo button several times to see its effect similarly we have a redo button which works in the same fashion
If you want to change the look of the text, first you need to select it. Once you select the text, you can make it look the way you want it. Convenient. Click on the bold button to make the text little thicker than the normal size. Click on the bold button again to get a normal text like this. Try out the italic and underline buttons in the same way. You can also use Ctrl B to issue a bold command. Ctrl I gives italic, Ctrl U underlines. Know that you can have your text with more than one of these styles. If you want to replace the text, simply select the words to be replaced and then start typing. Look, the selected line automatically disappears. Deletion of text is done similarly by selecting and then pressing delete key. You should save your work regularly, which is very important, ideally every 10 minutes so that you don't lose out on the information you have typed. However, Word has an autosave facility through which your document can be saved automatically. To save the document, click on save button. Look at the box on the screen. You should only use letters and numbers. Spaces and hyphens are also permitted by the way. For your file names, I mean you should only use letters and numbers for your file names. Do not use any other punctuation marks as they can cause problems. This will save your work to my documents by default. Once you give the document a name, this will appear instead of a document on the left at the top of the word window. Note that the extension dot doc is added automatically. When you are done with your work, Close it down without exiting from Word. See, I will tell you how to do it. It is very basic. Open the file menu, select close from the file menu and click. But if you need to open the same file again, go to the file menu, select open. It opens a box for you like this. Select your file, press enter or click open. Did you notice? that the task pane did not appear this time. It was displayed to help you start a new document. Use the page down key to move down the document and page up to go up the document like this. Well, as I said earlier, you can have more than one document open at the same point of time on the Microsoft Word. It allows you to copy text from one document to another. By clicking on these windows, you can move from one document to another. To work on a new document in MS Word at the same time, click new button. The first button on the top. Now, how do you want your this text to appear? It's easiest to set this up before you start typing. The settings will then be carried forward from one paragraph to the next. First changing fonts, fonts means alphabets. Before typing any more text, you may want to change the layout of your paragraphs. Well, you can that as well. For example, you might need them justified or double spaced. You could have these characteristics set before you start typing, but it's easier to see what's happening now as you have some words on the screen. When typing a document, you normally want text to align on the left hand side of the page. Some people prefer text to be fully justified. This is where text aligns both left and right. You can also align text to the right, example of an address, or to the center, example of a title or heading. You can use the buttons shown above to control how text is aligned on the page. Check that the insertion point, current typing position, is at the end of your first paragraph and that you haven't left any blank line afterwards if you have pressed delete. Try out all five justification buttons. Click on justify if you want your text fully justified. See how only the current paragraph is affected. Each paragraph has its own justification setting. If you like justified text, consider turning to hyphenation. This automatically splits a long word at the end of a line in two, improving the layout considerably. 
To turn this on, open the tools menu, choose language, then hyphenation and turn on automatically hyphenate document. Now sometimes you might be asked to double space your work, well or use some other spacing. You might even choose to have a quotation, for example, single spaced, with the rest of your text one and a half spaced. Click on the line spacing button, select 2.0 for double spacing as per the requirement. If you need the line spacing which is not in the list, then you can use the menu system or more from the line spacing button. In the paragraph window, you can also change various settings. Open the format menu and select a paragraph. The paragraph windows appear. Another useful option is spacing, which allows you to set up extra space around each paragraph. This saves you pressing enter twice between paragraphs. While the paragraph window is still open, you have a look at the options on the line and the page breaks tab. Click on the line and page breaks tab. Currently, window often control is set on. This ensures that you don't have a single line of paragraph isolated from the rest when printing. At least two lines will be shown on the top or bottom of the page. Note, also keep with next which keeps two paragraphs together. This is automatically turned on for you when you use a heading style. There's no need to change any of the settings here. So click on cancel to close the paragraph window. Now continue typing for more text. Press enter to end your first paragraph and press it again to give yourself a blank line. Type in another paragraph or two so you have a more realistic document. Include full stops, question marks or exclamation marks to create imagery sentences. Save your work. There's no need to change the file name unless you want to. It is recommended to save your work regularly as I said earlier also. Remember every 10 minutes I think it is better we should save our work. If it gets deleted, electricity goes, something goes wrong, your entire document or program that you've written disappears. So that is very disheartening, isn't it? So it's always better. Well, let's go further and see. There is a short command also for this. Press Ctrl S periodically. To edit a document, moving text around a document is done by selecting it for cutting or copying the text from its present position. First select the text, then go to edit menu. Then in edit menu, choose cut or copy according to your choice. After that, through keyboard, you can press Ctrl C for copy and Ctrl X for cut. These are the conditions you can use on the keyboard actually to give commands. And then place cursor to the location where you want to paste the text by simply clicking here. Then go to edit menu. Then in edit menu, go to paste. Through keyboard, you can press Ctrl plus V. Well, sometimes you need to change the layout for some other special sections. Example, for a list or quotation. It is often useful to number a list. The numbering button does this automatically for you. How? Move to the end of the text. Press Ctrl End. Click on the numbering button. A number 1 appears. The number automatically appends to 2 when we press Enter after finishing our sentence. And it continues like this. Or simply we can add up a bullet also. Like this. Let's now discuss about tables. Press Ctrl 1 to set up single spacing. Double space tables do not look good. Click on the insert table button on the standard toolbar. A drop down grid appears. Drag across this to set up a size of the required table. Here select three columns in the top row. If you hold the mouse button down while dragging, the skeleton table is drawn when you release the mouse button. Alternatively, move the mouse through the cells and click on the button when the table size is correct. If you make a mistake, click on the undo button. In the first cell, type name, then press tab to move to the second column. Type address, then press tab to move to the third column. Type notes 
press tab again and you will find a second row automatically appears. Fill in your own personal details in this row, noting the instructions below. While typing the address, press enter at the end of each line. The cell will automatically expand downwards. At the end of the address, press tab, not enter, to avoid having a blank line again. In the column headed notes, type a few lines of text. You will find that the words wrap from one line to the next automatically. Again, the cell expands downwards if necessary as you type. If you want to include further rows in your table, press tab when you reach the last cell. By default, the columns in a table are all of the same width. To adjust this, move the mouse cursor over the column border between column 1 and 2. It will change to a double-headed arrow. Hold the mouse button down and drag the border to the left or the right as needed. To resize the columns to exactly fit the data. Double click on the column borders. Do this on both the internal vertical borders. To widen the last column to fill the page, double click on the right hand border. Finally, to improve the look of the table, select the top row, position the mouse cursor to the left of the table and click once. Then click on the bold and center buttons. You know your computer helps you a lot, isn't it? It corrects your grammar and spellings as well. A red squiggly line under a word denotes that a word has been spelt incorrectly. If the line is green, then the grammar may be incorrect. You can check the whole or part of the text for mistakes using the spelling and grammar buttons. Like if we type this, how many spellings and other errors is there on this sentence? Now, there are errors and there are spelling mistakes and these errors are underlined by red. The computer is actually telling you, you have made some mistakes which have to be corrected. Now in total, in this sentence, there were about 10 errors. It capitalizes the first word in a sentence, how. It corrects certain misspellings, example, errors to errors. This to this and sentence to the sentence. So you can see there are a lot of spelling mistakes that are being made on the monitor. As you can see, they corrected. When you, once you correct the spelling mistakes, the red line disappears and the sentence comes back to normal with no underlining. May it be green, may it be red. If you want to see these settings, open the tools menu and select autocorrect options. Select the line of misspelled text. Word can spell check just a selected area. Click on the spelling and grammar button on the standard toolbar. Highlight the correct spelling of the many in the suggestion box. Click on change. Continue in the same manner with the other corrections. That means I hope you've got it. So this is a standard procedure. When you make mistakes, this is how you go about it of correcting them and putting them back into the monitor or that particular paragraph wherever you have made mistakes. Always check the correction of what you want with what you choose. Once the spelling check completed, the grammar checker will run. This isn't foolproof, but it does pick up some grammatical mistakes. At the end of the grammar check, click on no. You don't want the rest of the document checked. A readability statistics window appears. Note, it counts the words. Press enter for OK. Press end to deselect the highlighted text. Then enter twice to start a new paragraph. Sometimes, your words and spellings are correct, but the way they are put in the sentence are wrong grammatical mistakes that are made by you, which are again corrected by the computer. So it says, here, how he was not corrected because it recognized that it was a surname. So it would have been actually picked up if it wouldn't have been capitalized by word itself. So it needs manual correction to it. Also, though is was corrected in the second sentence, the grammar checker failed to notice it and had a plural subject that should have been are and not is. If you just have one word that is misspelled or a phrase with bad grammar, move the mouse pointer over the error and click onto the right mouse button. A list of likely correct spelling appears. If the spelling you want isn't in the list, choose spelling 
or grandma to invoke the checker. You can add pictures, symbols, date and time, page numbers etc. in the documents from insert menu. You might want to insert a picture into your text. Microsoft has its own selection of pictures that you can use or you can insert your own objects. Example, Excel charts, scan photographs, pictures you have drawn or GIF and JPEG files saved from the World Wide Web. For inserting pictures, go to Insert menu, select Picture and further select the option you want example from File or Clip Art. Once you are done with the document, you would want to take a printout. To take a printout, go to the File menu and choose Print. The following window appears. To print whole pages in the document, choose All. To print current page, choose current page. To print any selected, choose selection. Or else, if you want to print range, then type range, that is 3 to 5, in the text box after pages. Or if you want to print specific page, then enter page number. Or if you want to print specific page and selection, then enter page number and range. After that, choose the number copies per page required. Choose page range. That is all the pages of the document required other than the current page. That is pages on screen or any sequence of pages like from page 3 to page 5. Computer takes the printer automatically. Press OK. If your print area is bigger than the page area, you can adjust the page settings. Go to File menu and choose Page Setup. Page Setup will open this window for you. Once that is done, on the Margins tab, you can set up the margins, white space surrounding your text. These are the margins. This is what you call the margins. And Orientation. Choose Landscape to turn it sideways. Click on the Paper tab. The paper size should normally be set to A4. That's the standard size which should be taken. On Layout, you can control headers, footers and align the text vertically. Useful for a notice. The settings on document grid are somewhat advanced. So, close page setup, press enter for OK to keep any changes or escape to cancel them. <music> to set up headers or footers, text which automatically appears at the top or foot of each page. Open the view menu and choose header and footer. Page numbering has already been set. You inserted page numbers earlier, but other information can be added here if you want. Example, some text, a date or a file name. If there is no need to do so, then click on the close button on the special header and footer toolbar, open the file menu and choose exit. Select yes if you want to save the changes onto your document or no if you don't. So friends, that's how we can create a document on MS Word. It's very necessary to know Word properly. It is very useful program. So you keep practicing on it. I hope it was an excellent presentation and you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel more than free to ask me. Ma'am, how can we check the spelling of any word? Well, I was just coming to that a little while back. What you have to do is, you have to go to the Tools menu. After coming to the Tools menu, choose Spelling and Grammar. What happens, the word will automatically start correcting your spellings. Once it comes to a spelling where you actually have had a mistake, it will actually tell you to change it by replacing the word or by totally ignoring it. Ma'am, how can you draw table in MS Word? In this case, what you do is, you locate Insert Table button on the standard menu, select on the particular column and left click on the mouse button. That is the way to go about it. So friends, goodbye, good luck and take care. I will see you back again in the fourth module as fresh and as accepting in terms of the lecture that I am going to give you. In this session, 
we will study Microsoft PowerPoint. Click on the new slide button. The new slide appears in a different layout from the first. Click on the slideshow button or use F5 slideshow from the view menu. You will find that different templates have different predefined color schemes. You must have got some picture by now how people prepare presentations for their corporate, academic or any other requirement.